what is the one thing you can do with your bow arm to prevent crooked bow at the tip, stop it from skidding around all over the place and get a healthy sound at the tip of the bow with less effort. Let's explore how these three things are connected and we're gonna do some exercises to develop this fundamental piece of our bow technique. Hey, this is Ina Langerman from Violin and That Live, helping you along your musical journey. One of the first things that we learn when we start playing violin or viola is how to draw a straight bow from the frog to the tip and keep it as parallel to the bridge as we can. One of the most fundamental skills to achieve this is to practice down bows, starting at the point where our arm makes a square shape, makes this right angle over here at the elbow and practice opening at the elbow. So this allows our arm to move more out in front, allowing the bow to remain straight. However, when we start practicing this, we do run into a couple issues. The first is that we can hear right away that the sound gets weaker as we approach the tip. So at this point, we are taught to apply a little pressure with our index finger to give some substance to the sound quality. And while this helps us achieve a satisfactory sound at the tip, um, so often this can actually cause unnecessary tension and can lead to a lot of pressing and tightness and it leads all the way up to the shoulder. It can make us feel like we need to put so much effort just to achieve a good sound at the tip. The other issue that commonly occurs is that the bone gets so stiff that later it makes it difficult to achieve the same kind of sound at the frog. So in that situation, then we are slowly introduced how to keep our bow arm flexible and loose. And slowly but surely the sound improves at the frog, but then what happens when we're back at the tip? We try to get the arm to move forward the way we practiced earlier, but then what happens is that when you start applying these things in repertoire, then you can get pretty inconsistent um, with the sound at the tip. Sometimes it's okay and other times it still becomes a problem and starts to skid around. So what gives? Why does this happen? And actually this is a problem that I used to run into over and over and over again. And it's always something I have to check in um, once in a while. It's one of those fundamental skills that we need to maintain. And this is something that can be exacerbated and get worse when nerves kick in. That's when we can get more tense. So what can we do to help the bow be straight more consistently while maintaining a good sound at the tip? Now, it's true that some of the greatest violinists on earth didn't have a perfectly straight bow at the tip. But what they did have is immaculate control of their sound. And specifically, they knew how to maintain a good sounding point, even if the bow went slightly askew at the tip. By the way, fun fact, if you have short limbs like me, you are more likely to run into this problem and have a slightly crooked bow at the tip. Uh, let's just face it, it's true. Now, notice that I said limbs and not height. Okay, this is more to do with proportions and less to do with your height. And also the way we hold the violin, the angle which we hold also affects this. So if I held the violin out, of course my bow would be crooked. And if I held it more in front of me, in my case, it would be straight. Of course, I could go in more detail in another video on this. So when players who already have good fundamental skills uh, run into the issue of the crooked bow, most often the problem lies in the proper weight distribution in the bow hold itself. 99% um, of the time that's the issue. So what happens is that during a quick down bow, like if I do a, a quick down bow, what happens a lot of time is this. The bow loses contact point. At, and because the bow hair, the hair of the bow, did not maintain an adequate grip of the string. So like we said earlier, like the bow get it's very weak here. But wait, isn't that why we should use our index finger to add more pressure? Yes and no. Now, remember that adding the index finger bow pressure alone, alone, 
can make it more challenging and lead to tension. Not all the time, but sometimes this can happen. So this actually leads to a very important lesson that I learned from Paul Rowland, the great pedagogue Paul Rowland, is that there are actually two types of pressure here involved. The first is the type that the person, the player, induces on the bow. So that will be my index finger adding bow pressure here or putting my natural arm weight down. I hate using the word pressure, I prefer natural weight. Um, now the second type of pressure is actually the one that the bow itself, the stick and the hair, make onto the string. And it is the second type that determines what kind of sound is going to come out of the instrument. So if we are consciously putting bow pressure with our finger on the stick, it may or may not allow the bow to transfer its own pressure and make good contact with the string. So especially, this is true if we are tensing the shoulder. So if we are all tight like this, like we're nervous and we're like this, we may be putting pressure on the stick, but the stick is not doing the same for the string. And because of that, of course, we lose that contact point at the tip. So, what do we do? So, of course, first we want to practice relaxing our arm. And here is a more efficient way to achieve the desired pressure at the tip that will help you to play in a more healthy tone. So, instead of intentionally pushing the stick down with the index finger, what you want to do is create an internal rotation of the entire forearm as you draw a down bow. And conversely, you'll do the opposite. When you do an up bow, you'll do a rotation of the entire forearm going the other way. So this will actually teach you the basics of pronation and supination of the bow hold by using the larger muscle group of the forearm. Before diving deeper into the smaller muscles in the fingers and independence here, you see it's actually easier for most people to learn these kind of skills starting with the larger muscles before going into the fine details. So practicing this forearm rotation, it's very often overlooked, especially in the earlier stages. And it's the one technique, it's the one skill that can not only get you a good sound at the tip with less effort, but at the same time, it'll help you maintain a good contact point, which will of course result in a consistently better sound and straighter bow. Now I'm going to show you a couple quick and easy exercises that you can do right now, right away, to develop this forearm rotation into your plane. But before we get into it, if you're getting any value from this video so far, please give me a quick thumbs up to help support this channel and so that YouTube is more likely to share this with more folks. For the first exercise, let's put our instrument down. We don't need it right now. We're simply going to hold our arm out like this. So right now it's in neutral position. So our palm facing down. So the pronation is going this way and the supination is the other way like this. So pronation index finger facing the floor, supination pinky facing the floor. So step that's step one. Step two, we're going to grab a pencil, one of these, hold the pencil like a bow hold and repeat, do the same thing, hold it first with the palm facing down, very loose, by the way, check that your shoulder isn't going like this, okay, very loose. Uh, repeat, same thing, pronation, index finger facing the floor, supination, pinky facing the floor. You can even exaggerate, go like this. So we'll do this a few times and feel the rotation from the elbow, especially from the elbow, the entire forearm should be rotating when you do this, okay? Step three, we are going to draw a down bow, like a pretend down bow with the pencil, and we are going to exaggerate the motion that we just did. So pretend we're doing a down bow, so we're at the frog, we're doing supination, so the pinky is facing the floor, and when we get to the tip, our pretend tip, our index finger is going to face the floor. So we're going to draw this arc shape actually. So of course this is exaggerated. So slowly switch right here, right where you have this 90 degree angle. That's when we're in neutral with the palm facing 
down and slowly we turn into the pronation of the entire forearm like this. This is our tip. So let's go back to the frog. So now right here, that's our square, palm facing down. Go to our frog, pinky down, supination. We'll do it a few times, down bow, up bow. Of course, we'll have to translate this now to the instrument and also practice doing this playing a single string. Okay, so that adds a few extra things. So finally, let's do this on our instrument. We'll play the A string. Um, we're gonna use, of course, not such an extreme amount of motion now as we did with the pencil, but keep in mind how it felt when you did it with the pencil and try to get the same kind of sensation in your bow hold. And actually before you even start, you can practice just by putting it down in the different parts. So at the frog, feel the pinky reach down towards the floor almost. So this is like um, the pinky's in charge of the weight of the hand. Then we'll put it in the middle where we have the square. This is where we're in our neutral position without anything special. And now at the tip, forearm will rotate. Notice how um, if I took away the bow, watch this, if I take away the bow at the tip, this is where we are. This, like, this is how we held the pencil. Of course, I want to play on the A string. So it's the same feeling. And notice how that that um, finger pressure that we talked about earlier, it, it becomes natural because of the forearm rotation. So I don't have to consciously push down here. It's already done with adequate rotation here. Um, of course, the amount of rotation also will determine um, your dynamic. That's another story. And also, of course, where the contact point is going to be, that's all going to affect your sound. But right now, just stick to the center um, and practice drawing a down bow now. So starting at the frog. And back. And another thing you can do, a little trick. If you look at your bow shape, and I'm going to just press down for a second so you can see the arc. Notice how it's not, it's not a straight line, right? It's an arc shape. You can use this arc shape of your unique bow. You can use it as a guide as to when to start switching from this position into neutral and then into this position. You can use that to guide you because sometimes what happens, this is something I used to run into a lot, sometimes what happens is I don't switch to the pronated position quick enough. And if we don't switch on time, if we're already over here and I'm still kind of in neutral, that's when my bow is going to start to skid because I'm not, I don't have enough of that weight, natural arm weight down. So our bow shape can actually really help us out as a visual guide. So I'll do this one more time. At the frog, pinky down, supinated, and then we use the bow the bow shape. All right, so that's it for this video. If you enjoyed it and you found it helpful, please share it with a friend or a colleague. Let me know in the comments below what was your biggest takeaway and let me know what you're working on. Until next time, happy practicing.